Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about qualitative data collection procedures. Um, so when you are planning your qualitative data collection, you need to plan for uh, the participants that you're going to recruit. So you want to discuss in your proposal or in your plan, uh, your strategies for purposefully selecting uh, your participants. Uh, you need to select specific participants and a site to study those participants um, where you are going to learn the most you can about the phenomenon or about the problem that you're studying. So it should be a very purposeful, non-random selection where you are subjectively selecting individuals that are going to contribute insight to the topic that you're researching. Uh, so you want to discuss the number of sites and the number of participants that you plan to work with. Um, but in qualitative data collection, there's something called saturation. So that is the idea that as you are collecting data and you're getting uh, feedback and responses and you're collecting this information from all these individuals, you are also analyzing their responses as you're collecting it. Um, maybe not in the moment while you're giving the interview, but you're going to analyze their responses before you then interview the next person or the next at, or before you interview at the next site, for example. So as you are going through the data collection process, you are finding themes and insights and things from the participants as you go. So when you get to the point where you are no longer um, finding new insights or new themes from the data that you're collecting. Um, and so you're getting a lot of repetition. People are saying a lot of the same things that you've already heard again and again from past um, participants. Then we'd say that the data are saturated. So you've reached saturation of the data. And at that point, you don't need to continue to collect more data uh, because all the data that you're collecting is just continuing to reinforce what you have already collected. So there's no, if there's no new insight or new information to collect, then you don't need to keep going at that point. Um, so for interviewing, um, it's important to have a plan for how you're going to conduct interviews. Um, so you want to have a plan for the information about the interview. Um, how are you going to introduce yourself and the interview and the topic that you're studying? What questions or probes are you going to ask during the interview? And do you have any closing instructions to share when you're finished with your interview? Um, so you might include maybe five to 10 questions. Of course, it depends on the subject that you're studying, the participants you're working with, how much time that you're able to spend with each individual. Um, and they should be open-ended questions that give the participants the opportunity to talk and give them the opportunity to uh, share as much information as they'd like. Uh, you want to be prepared in advance. You shouldn't just be winging this. Uh, you want to know what questions you're going to ask. And if you can memorize those questions, that is even better. Uh, because then if the questions are memorized, then you can maintain eye contact and continue to discuss in a more fluid, uh, natural sort of way, rather than um, more mechanically as you're reading the questions from the paper. And an observational protocol, um, you will be recording information while you are observing. So there are a few specific things that you wanna make sure that you're recording. Um, so you want to be taking descriptive notes, uh, meaning that as you're observing some event that's taking place, you want to be taking notes and writing down as much as you can about what is actually taking place during that event. Uh, reflexive notes are the researchers' notes about anything that they're thinking or insights that they have um, during the observation. Okay, so the descriptive notes are as straightforward and as objective as possible, considering they're a subjective interpretation of what's going on, um, but they should be as objective as possible um, in writing down and just recording the event as it's happening, whereas reflexive notes should be more about the researcher's 
thoughts and ideas and insights that they might be having while they're observing that event. And then also take whatever notes you can about demographic information, if that is observable, um, and take notes about the setting. Um, so there may be notable features about the setting where the event is taking place. And so make sure that you are documenting those in case those notable features might have uh, some effect on how the participants are behaving. Okay, thank you so much for watching. That's all I have for you and I'll see you in the next video.